did work a little better than my mouth does, I'm okay. Uh, thank you for hearing my testimony today. I'm here testifying as myself. I am the incident in Weir from 2010 uh, that also went all the way to the First Circuit Court of Appeals. Uh, I was charged with wiretapping. Uh, my decision, and I'm actually not going to stick to my script here because I want to get time to address some of the issues that were brought up. First of all, uh, to Attorney Rice, who I believe left, um, and all the state employees who got the chance to testify first with a lot of time, and of course here we are down the wire. Uh, unfortunately, she's not here, but the question that I would love the committee to ask her is Article 8 of the New Hampshire Constitution, which is the supreme law of the state, states that government, therefore, should be open, accessible, accountable, and responsive. There are no carve-outs. There are no exceptions. And that's pretty much what this bill is trying to do. We live in the 21st century. There are recording devices. If you're on the job and you're a public servant, you're on the job and you're on the record. It is that simple. I hate to say it, but really your personal feelings about how you feel about it, it's not relevant. You're a public official who swore an oath to the New Hampshire Constitution, and that requires you to be open and transparent. 38 states already have single party consent. It's not a big deal. If the Department of Homeland Security can say to us, as citizens of this country, that uh, if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear, then I'm going to say to you today that if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear from this bill. You should be on the record if you're a public official. I would urge you not to start down the path of diluting this. I have testified in front of several committees here for five years on this issue. I first came to the legislature when my court case was going on. Nobody wanted to help me. They said, no, try it in the courts. We tried it in the courts. I won. It cost the taxpayers of Weir tens of thousands, $57,500. It wasted a lot of my time and a lot of the town's time. And there's the case in Keene that also went all the way to the New Hampshire Supreme Court. So you guys have an opportunity today to actually put this to rest. Otherwise, I would say over time, <coughs> we'll just see more and more and more lawsuits, which cost the taxpayers money. It wastes everyone's time. And, you know, this state gets a D minus for integrity, according to the latest reports, and that was reported on NHPR. So let's do something about it. On the job, on the record. With regard to the issue of malicious editing, that's a non-issue. If you're worried about that, you have the right to also record the conversation. If it's between two parties and someone comes in, that person can ask. And if there's an opportunity where someone is wondering why they're getting recorded, there's probably a situation where someone wants a record of it. So either the official can say, yes, you know what, you're here to help me out. I do want this on the record. Or you could make your own recording. Or the constituent, in that case, could also consent to the recording. Uh, let me see if I covered everything I wanted to say. Oh, this is very important. In my case, the court found that because of the Glick decision, the officers do not have qualified immunity. Now, as everyone in this chamber probably knows, qualified immunity is a public servant's get-out-of-jail-free card. It's the one where you can say, for all of us, uh, ignorance of the law is no excuse, but if you're a public official, apparently you're allowed to say, well, I'm the enforcer of the law, but yeah, I didn't know what the law said, so sorry, oops, my bad. In my case, they said, you can't do that anymore. So unless you guys figure out a way to make a bill that's good, on the job, on the record, what will happen as there are more lawsuits, public officials will not be able to claim qualified immunity. So if you get filmed somewhere, you know today, because I'm testifying on it, that as a public official, you can be held personally liable in the case, if it goes all the way up the chain of law command, right, that uh, you can be held personally liable because you know that we are allowed to record you. So all I have to say, if anyone has any questions, let me know. If there were a provision in this bill, Say you recorded a conversation between yourself and a 
to say some law enforcement officer. If, 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 you, if both parties get a copy of that recording, there should be no problem. Well, yes, but I think actually as, I mean, I'm obviously an individualist. I think if you want a recording, that's great. I think if you're a public official, I love the bill that said people should, you know, law enforcement should start wearing body cams. Um, I think that's helpful. Certainly in my case, there were body cams and cameras in the police department that didn't work that night. Oh, and when right. I subpoenaed them, or subpoenaed the records to mm. prove that they had fixed the cameras that hadn't worked, there were no records that they were ever fixed. So either someone was telling a tall tale, and I know it wasn't me. So basically, I don't think people should be so scared of this idea. We live in the 21st century. These things are recorded anyway. And it's just a modern way to keep everyone on the up and up. It's really an opportunity for you guys to embrace something that will ultimately make your life better. Unless, of course, you have something to hide. You know, honestly, I've had an experience with a selectman in my town some years ago where we had a, a group come in and we were trying to return a $500 check that the town had given this group. And we, we returned it because it was a charitable group and charity is not, you know, charity is when you give your own money, not when you give the town's money. And we went through this whole thing, and one of the selectmen went out of his board, swore, and, all, and there was a recording device up there, and he knew about it. <coughs> the next morning, I was over at the town hall, and he says, it was a recording device. I said, yes, it was. He says, can I get a copy of it? I said, I suppose, but I, I don't know who did it. Later on, I came back, and I said, well, this was a recording from the civics class at the high school. <laughs> End of story. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for taking my question. This, this bill is intended only for the members in this chamber or the elected officials. I wouldn't have any problem. The unintended consequences that I'm looking out for any public servant, it's beyond legislation, beyond police uh, the officials beyond court system. We in this state have public servants that are not under any of these categories. They do not have any awareness or, you know, we are putting people under scrutiny for no, I, not for no reason, but it's more making everybody a, Head thin trigger of lawsuit. That's, that's what, you know, I'm looking at this as a broad sweep, dragnet of things. So, would you believe that this is a dragnet? I would uh, like to address that by saying the definition of public servant, as it's written in this bill, comes from another law or another section of the law. It is not defined originally in here. So, somewhere in the wisdom in the past, it was decided that that is what a public servant is. So if <coughs> that's the definition of a public servant, then surely we should use the definition of a public servant. So it's not truly great being overbroad. It is actually just using the language that already exists. Okay. No further questions? Oh, Thank, you, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your testimony. All morning we seem to have heard everybody approach this as a negative thing. Would you not believe that this is a positive thing to show the good that public mm -hmm. officials do? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's an opportunity. This is a way for New Hampshire also to be sort of a groundbreaker and to say, are we, as in states in the Constitution, are open and transparent. So really, it's yes, it's an opportunity and it's a way to show the good. And filming police officers, for example, I see it as, a, as just witnessing. Someone can make an objective record that makes it easier for everyone to represent, to, to Robinson's point. Why not have something that's subjective? Objective. Objective. <laughs> um, yeah, it's an opportunity. And I 
I encourage everyone to vote off the path. I, I do no further questions now. For everybody's information, we're past the time that the other bill was supposed to start. But the chairman is not back, and where I'm the prime sponsor of this other bill, we'll just continue this hearing until the chairman comes back. <laughs> Mr. Freeman. Which one? 